One of the terms you may hear a lot nowadays is this idea of a microserver, whereby you begin to place traditional server type functionality on much more space efficient and much more power efficient platforms. Uh, this video, we'd like to take that one step further and introduce a microcluster, whereby you combine multiple of these servers together to provide uh, better performance, better scalability, and perhaps higher availability depending upon configuration. So there are two advances which make this uh, a possibility nowadays. The first one from a hardware perspective is the amount of processing power that can be packed into a small platform using a small amount of power. Uh, for this example we're using the plug computer. This is called a Shiba plug. It's provided by a company called Global Scale. It can be purchased for $99 US. Uh, it has a 1.2 gigahertz ARM V5 processor with 512 megabytes of RAM, 512 megabytes of flash. Uh, for this example though, rather than booting from the flash, we'll utilize its external SD card slot. We've instructed the bootloader to boot from this. It gives us additional storage. It gives us a little bit better performance. And uh, it also spares the finite life of the internal flash. Now to introduce this particular device into the cluster, it's just a matter of plugging in the Ethernet connection, and plugging it into our power, and this will ultimately boot up and be part of the cluster. A little bit more about our cluster board. Its dimensions are 17 by 17 inches square, which means it fits nicely into a rack mountable shelf. You could envision a whole bunch of these together to do some sort of massively parallel computation. Uh, the board itself supports 12 plug computers. No doubt a mechanical or an electrical engineer can do a better job of making this a denser solution. But what makes this real interesting is uh, we sort of take the definition of commodity hardware to a whole new to level in that uh, everything that you see here, with of course the exception of these plug computers and this power coupling, are purchased from Home Depot. The second advancement which makes this an attractive platform is the fact that the Java Standard Edition Hotspot virtual machine has been ported to this ARM Linux v5 platform. What that means is the wealth of Java applications that have been written over the years are now available unmodified on this platform. So we'll take advantage of one of the ubiquitous applications that have been used for a very long period of time for millions of servers, the Apache Tomcat web container and we'll create a cl cluster around that software. So this diagram gives you a feel for how our plugs are arranged logically on the board. We have a total of six plugs altogether. Uh, the rightmost front plug is actually our load balancer. It's running Apache Server 2.2.21. This is a natively compiled application on the plug itself. Uh, in addition to it providing HTTP type capability, it has the mod proxy module uh, compiled in also. And what that does is provide a round robin load balancer reverse proxy to our five backend Tomcat servers. The five Tomcat servers are configured identically. They just have separate host names, h1, h2, through h5.plugrock.com. And each runs Java SE 1.7 update 2 hotspot with Apache Tomcat 6.0.33. So from the outside, this appears as one machine, plugrack.com. The load balancer is responsible for sending requests to the individual backend nodes on a round robin basis. In order to stress this microcluster a little bit, we want to pick a simple application uh, to run repeatedly. And the one we choose is one that's actually bundled with the Tomcat server. So let's go ahead and get to our Tomcat server now. So we go to httpplugrack.com, and you'll see uh, near the bottom there are a series of JSP examples. And the one we'll choose is this panel tag file. So this is the response upon uh, going to that particular URL. We're going to benchmark this cluster now with varying numbers of configured backend Tomcat servers in play to give you a feel for how performance changes as we introduce more servers to the back end. The way we're going to go about doing that is via this balance manager. It's a built-in interface that comes available with the mod proxy 
on the Apache server. And what you see is that, in fact, we do have five servers uh, configured in. However, at the current time, only one is enabled. So H2 through H5, in this case, are disabled, so that when we go ahead and introduce a load, only one of the servers is going to be in play. On to stressing our cluster a little bit. A little explanation is in order here. On the Apache web server, a program called AB for Apache Bench is provided, which enables you to do some simple stress testing. So we're going to invoke the AB program with the following command line arguments. The first thing we're going to do is pick a URL to send. It is our sample JSP that we showed a few seconds ago, the panel. Uh, the minus N4000 says we're going to send 4000 requests. Minus C100 is the concurrency. So we'll send 4000 requests 100 at a time. So let's go ahead and run this benchmark and see what happens. So you can see in this example that the primary activity by just looking at the network lights is on a first node and that in fact is the only node that's receiving HTTP requests for this first example. Turning back to our test terminal, you see that all 4,000 requests have now been sent. Uh, some statistical information is printed out following this. And what we see is that the test itself completed in 28.9 seconds. Uh, all 4,000 requests were sent. Further on down, you see that the average requests per second were on the order of 138.3, and the time per request on average was 7.226 milliseconds. We can confirm that only one of the uh, nodes was exercised by taking a look at our uh, balancer application manager on the plug rack, and you can see that only uh, h1.plugrack.com received all 4,000 of the requests. In between each running of the test, we'll restart the web server. And as a result, when you get to the Balance Manager application, you see that all of the status rows and columns are zeroed out. Uh, what we want to do for this second test is to introduce another node to the cluster. And the way we'll go about doing that is by clicking on h2.plugrack.com's URL. And we will now enable that node as part of the cluster. And you'll see that the status column indicates that both H1 and H2 are now available. Returning back to our stress tester application, let's go ahead and run the same program with the same arguments again, this time with two cluster, with two nodes in the cluster being enabled. For the second example, we're distributing from the load balancer to only two of the nodes and you can see clearly by the network activity that they are the busy ones of all the ones in the cluster. Our second test with two nodes enabled in the cluster is now complete. Let's take a look at some of the statistics that are printed out from this run. You'll see that first of all the time taken for the request is substantially less about half of what the original one node uh, test was and you'll also see that the request per second increased substantially and the time per request decreased substantially. So by introducing that second node, we really did get a big performance bump. We can confirm that in fact, only two of the nodes are being utilized by refreshing our balancer screen. And you'll see that in fact, both plug rack one and plug rack two received 2000 of the requests each. For our third and final test, we will first restart the HTTP load balancer application as evidenced by the load balancer manager interface. You'll see that everything is zeroed out and uh, this time we will enable all five of the nodes to receive HTTP requests by once again looking at the status column to see that all are okay and waiting and ready to receive HTTP requests. So now let's go to our uh, Apache benchmark where we will once again run the same exact invocation that we did for the last two tests and let's get this going. And for this test we're utilizing all five of our nodes and you can see that there's activity on each one of them. Our third and final run is complete. All 4,000 requests are finished. 
taking a look at the results here, you'll see that the time taken for the test is a scant 7.7 .7 seconds, roughly one quarter of the time of the original one node configuration. So you can see we do achieve a good bit of scalability by adding in additional nodes, as many as five in this case. Request per second moves up to five, over 500 per second. Time per request on average is now below two milliseconds. So again, let's go ahead and confirm that uh, the load was split evenly amongst all our servers by reloading our load balancer manager. And you'll see that each of the nodes received one fifth of 4,000 or 800 uh, requests each.